I'm gonna have a mess around with this Torcada high performance dado set and the big news is it's metric the whole thing is metric all of the blades all of the shims and that makes my life a lot easier because all of my tools are in metric and often most of my timber is in metric or I at least thickness it down to a metric measurement so for us in uh, the parts of the world that don't use Imperial this makes a hell of a lot of sense You'll notice I'm in a different workshop. This is my mate Geo's workshop. I went to use this on uh, my table saw and I've never really had to use a dado blade before, but my arbor is too short. It'll only fit one single blade. A dado set is a series of stacked blades, so you need a longer arbor, and that's why I'm using this table saw today. So, this dado set, as with all dado sets, consists of two outer blades, which are fairly similar to a standard uh, circular saw blade, many teeth, set at uh, one tooth beveled, one, teeth, one tooth straight. And then you, in this set you have six chipper blades. Now these chipper blades range from two mil to about four mil and they only have four teeth. But that's a big step up from some um, uh, dado sets which only have two on the chipper blade. So you'll get a smoother cut and the saw won't have to work as hard with a, uh, these four carbide teeth. In addition to that, you have a whole range of these little shims, which as I said, are all metric. So I think there's about 11 here that range from 0 0.05 of a mil up to 0 0.3 of a mil. And what that allows you to do is to space these blades to get really, really precise measurements, get beautiful tight uh, fits, dados when you're making joinery or rebates, and it just makes a really good product. It's very easy to use and you'll get great results. So, you've already got a router table and a table saw, why do you need to go and buy a whole set of dado blades? You can do a lot of really effective dadoing on a router table, and often I do, but you're really limited to the size of those router bits without doing a whole bunch of adjustments. So, you know, the standard sizes are often metric, you can get 12 mil and uh, 16 mil and whatever else you need, but often uh, plywood even though it's called 12 mil, might be 12.7 or a little bit less. Sometimes when you're thicknessing timber yourself, it might be above or below those measurements that you can actually achieve with a router bit. What these Stato stacks allow you to do is by using these shims, you can get really precise measurements and that allows you to get better joinery. It's also a question of efficiency. There are jobs that a dado stack on a table saw will just do cleaner and faster in a production setting than you can do on a router table. Now obviously there are advantages to router tables as well and that'll depend on the job that you're doing. But these are really useful, they're uh, safe and clean cutting and most of all you've got that accuracy which you sometimes can't achieve on a router table. So a few bits and pieces on setting up a dado stack. First of all, you're always using the outer blades. There's never a situation when you're only using one of them or you're only using the chippers. You always have to use these outer blades which means that the smallest size that you can achieve is just these two outer blades placed together. Now when you're stacking these blades, whether you're using the chippers or not, it's really important that these teeth are offset so that one is in front of the other. And the point of that is that so that when you're clamping them together, they're not actually pressing those carbide teeth together which can cause them to chip. The second thing you need to know is, as I mentioned earlier, these outer blades do have beveled teeth and you want them so that the bevels on the outer teeth are pointing up. What that means is when you hold them together in place, they form a little V into the center. If they are the wrong way around, they'll form a little peak. So you want that V in the center, which means you get nice, clean, sharp edges on the outside of your cut. Okay, so you've got these on the outside, you've got the teeth offset, and then you can start placing the chipper blades in between, again, offsetting the teeth, to achieve the height that you're, that you're trying to achieve. One of the easiest ways to start getting this height within the ballpark before you start putting in shims to get it more exact is to place them down on a really nice flat surface as a reference. Now, I prefer to use Malamine or MDF because it's dead flat. You can also use the top of your table saw if you're really careful, but I don't want to damage the teeth on the carbide teeth on these saw blades, so I prefer not to put them onto steel. Then I'm going to get the stock that's actually the thickness that I want to cut. So I know that this is meant to be 12 mil ply, it's actually about 12.75, and so I'm going to lay this flat on my reference piece, and I'm going to stack a combination of these blades up until I get a really nice 
flush finish from the top of my board to the top of the tooth here. If I need to be a little bit lower, I'll change the combination, maybe put some shims in, vice versa. But this is a great way to get where you need to be relatively quickly. Now usually for a piece like this, I'll get them so that I think they're pretty good. I'll do a test cut, I'll do a test fit, and then I'll decide if I need more shims or less. But this will get you where you need to go quickly. So something to keep in mind when you're stacking these is that there's no point measuring the exact size of the teeth themselves because each tooth slightly overhangs the other one uh, when you stack these together. So it's the accumulated width that you actually need, not necessarily the individual width of each tooth added together. It just doesn't quite work that way. So I've got my um, bottom blade. I'm gonna try a 3.5 and a 4 mil, and then I'll place my top blade on and then I'll see if I need any shims. Remember to offset these teeth as you stack them up so you're not gonna damage them. That looks pretty good. It actually looks like it might be a little bit tight, but I wanna start that way because a lot of table saws have just the tiniest amount of wobble in the arbor, and what that can mean is it means that the uh, the dado that you're cutting is slightly wider than you intended. So, I mean, this is way less, it's probably less than a tenth of a mil lower than my stock, but that's where I'll start before I put any shims in. Now, if you do need shims, what you want to do is space them evenly, as evenly as you can, between the chipper blades. Don't stack them all up in the center or all up to one side. You'll end up with a gap and you won't get a nice clean cut. So spread them out and use them as sparingly as possible. You're better off using a changing the configuration of your blades if you can and using just a few shims than stacking a whole bunch of shims in there. I'm gonna place this onto the arbor and then I'm gonna do a test cut. Now make sure that you're placing them onto the arbor in the order that you stack them. Keep that offset like we talked about. Make sure that the teeth are going the correct direction, the same as your table saw you would. And the other thing that you need to keep in mind is because we're cutting a dado, the blade is much, much wider. It probably won't fit in your standard throat plate. So you're gonna to need to use a modified throat plate. Now you can purchase a whole variety of these for different thicknesses. They perform wonderfully. But if you have a really specific size that you need to achieve, you can actually make your own. You can buy blanks, which you can then place the blade in the saw, clamp this down and then raise the blade up through that throat plate to make a zero clearance insert, which means the cut is exactly the width of the blade that you're using, which gives you really nice clean dados. Um, that's one really good way to do it. In fact, that's the way that, that most people do it, but there are sets of throat plates that you can buy that will match some standard dado sizes, so it's really up to you. Um, Geo has made his own, so that's what I'm gonna be using today. So what's the real advantage in getting a set in metric? The real reason for me is that all of my tools are in metric. Every measurement device I have is in metric. Every drill bit, every router bit is in metric. And so when I'm using these shims and using these blades, I know exactly what half of a mil, 0.3 of a mil, 0.05 of a mil, I know what that is. I know what it's gonna to add to my cut. I'm really comfortable with this and it makes sense for me and it makes sense that this measurement system is the same as everything else in my shop. I think this is the only fully metric data set on the market. It just doesn't make any sense that we're still using Imperial systems when everything in my shop is metric.